robots will be so developed that we won't know whether we're speaking with a human or a robot. Technology has progressed, but it hasn't reached the level of being practical yet. But the hope is that it will be practical. Mr. Sunny Gupta is an accomplished engineering manager with Atlassian, one of the leading software companies in the world. His passion for coding started at the young age of 12, and since then he has spent over a decade in the industry working across various verticals such as e-commerce, SaaS, fashion tech, med tech, and media, among others. So here we have Mr. Sunny Gupta for the keynote. Hello, everybody. Uh, so just like Mr. Anup, uh, I also did not, did not have a, a PPT uh, to begin with today. But uh, in the last 15 minutes, I was able to put together, you know, some slides across the various topics I wanted to talk about, right? So uh, thank you for the very kind introduction. Uh, I want to get started uh, trying to understand the room a bit, right? So. I know that it's a mix of uh, attendees today, but how many of y'all are students? I thought more of y'all always said that we are lifelong learners. No? How many of y'all are students? Right? All right. So, uh, you know, I, I believe in learning forever, right? And once I graduated out of college, uh, back in 2012, I realized now I have entered this rat race, right? I mean, most of us are doing that. We like to say a bunch of other things as well, but at the end of the day, uh, to a great extent, if you do not focus on the learning aspects, you may end up just being a part of a rat race, right? Uh, so let me first talk about who I am. Let me get go back to uh, something that I'm really proud of, uh, but which was pure luck, right? So, who am I? I am a very lucky fellow. I am I am one of the luckiest people. Uh, hope I am not jinxing it. But uh, I say that because I have had a lot of black swan events, right? Uh, I have had opportunities that I don't know why, not knowing that you know computers or programming was going to be the future of you know, making money, right? As a 12 year old, I had no idea what what would make money or do I even need to make money, right? I mean, my, my father was going to give me money forever, right? Uh, but, I don't know, curiosity took over. Uh, the first time we got a computer at our house, 2002, I was 12 years old. 2002, uh, I was lucky enough that my dad was working at this company called Reliance, right? Uh, today, there is geo and everything, but Reliance is a family run business. And one great thing they did was invest in their employees. They had budgets. They get, they let their employees buy white goods, tax free, etc. And so, you know, a lot of parents across in that entire society bought computers like, Acha, Pandeji, what are you buying? Oh, you know what? We're buying a computer. It will help my student, you know, kid study or be updated with the times, etc. Right? Somebody, Sharma ji, what are you buying? Okay, we are also buying a computer. My kid wants to play games. So, you know, that, that entire thing started happening and uh, everybody was buying computers. There's a computer now at my house and I am this guy who is not good at playing games. So if I am playing multiplayer games with my friends, I'm going to lose, right? I am lucky that I was slow at that point, right? Uh, because I was naturally pushed towards trying to do something creative that did not, that did not require a lot of, uh, how do I put it? You know, my mind did not have to be the sharpest 
I could learn at my own pace. And, you know, we got access to internet. Yes, again, yet another lucky thing, right? Uh, I saw Yahoo and I was like, how is this happening? Like, this just, there's just this telephone line that is connecting my computer and I expect it to just be power. How is data, I mean, obviously I did not think data, but how is this image from today, you know, from across the world coming into my computer? Curiosity led me to try and explore and build something of my own. There was this website called GeoCities. Uh, I don't know how many of you all uh, have used, right? How many of you all know GeoCities? You're dating yourself. Uh, but yeah, I was that kid who came across GeoCities. I started building this small website uh, for myself and then eventually showed it to my parents. Uh, my dad enjoyed that his son has built something and he showed it to his manager. And the manager said, why don't you build something for us? I have a key takeaway for uh, leaders out here. Make sure whatever talent you have, make sure you take out opportunities to let people in your organization showcase that. Make sure you create opportunities for interns across the various verticals you have. It's a small investment probably from your end. Sometimes it could even be free, right? It could be pro bono. But if you give those opportunities, People like me, slow people like me, have opportunities to come try something out. Maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't, right? But having that opportunity is really important. Students, on the other hand, you do not necessarily have to be super lucky today. You all have access to mobile computers, thanks to you know a bunch of initiatives. Government does it. I know NASCOM has a bunch of initiatives that uh, lets people try and build things. Uh, Fireport 80 from what I'm hearing, right? Uh, uh, I have seen so many interesting success stories come out of it, right? Uh, I've, I've seen a bunch of the previous uh, sessions that have happened. You all have an opportunity to learn from some of the best people. Uh, I, I did not have them. I had to like open up phpbuddy.com. I had to open up man pages. I don't even know how many of you all understand man pages today. But you all can just ask chat GPT while you are asking. I was like, chat GPT, just ask it to you know write some code. It will give you code that probably works. If it doesn't work, you can kind of just make some tweaks. And you know you, you, you have this executive assistant as a junior engineer today, right? Uh, in the form of that. Uh, what I'm trying to uh, make sure you understand is, when I say I was this lucky fellow, I did have a lot of opportunities. You have even more opportunities today. There was some hard work that was required. Think about a case where I would have started uh, to play games. Luck was there. I had internet. I had a computer. I had, I mean, a decently good life where I did not have to struggle for things, right? I could just have lived on my life. And without that hard work, luck was shining through. And I couldn't have made it, right? Uh, remember, if there are two key ingredients to success, this is for all the students out here, right? Uh, if there are two uh, major ingredients, one is going to be luck, the other is going to be hard work. Luck is definitely not in your control, right? You, you, cannot, make, you cannot get chances at will, right? But when that chance appears, you are in control of how you perform at that time if you have worked hard. So if you continuously work hard and luck shines someday, you have the amalgamation of luck and hard work. Uh, anybody following this through? Does this make sense, right? I mean, it took me a lot of time to understand this. I, I, I realized this much later. I, Like I said, right, I'm not trying to say that I, I am the smartest person who took hard work as a choice, right? But I was doing this. I was I was trying to study things. I was trying to do uh, interesting things. I got some recognition from my parents, from my uh, you know seniors and elders around me, and they were like, "Oh, Sunny is such a you know he's th this computer geek." And I was not doing anything. I was not doing anything major. I'm not trying to say that I was this geek who was hacking around and stuff. I was doing small freelance projects, and they were just PhD to HTML. Like somebody would send you a Photoshop file, you have to just convert it to HTML and CSS, right? 
but i was making some some small amount of pocket money and that was a big thing i i think i've used paypal before even i knew who elon musk was a, a lot of people eventually today realize that hey you know what oh this guy made paypal and yeah paypal is something etc right uh so yeah that's who i am uh i i i do want to make sure you all understand that you all are lucky enough today mix it with some amount of hard work uh hard work today is also easy to get you know do go on twitter create an account engage with tech twitter i host tech twitter spaces uh, almost on a i guess daily basis right uh, we, we talk to students we talk to mentors leaders from the industry and uh, we try and understand the pulse of what's happening and everybody is scared sir we are uh, graduating next year uh, but you know it looks like we took made the wrong decision of choosing computer science what are your thoughts on this i mean i mean i i hear all of these things and i'm like first of all relax has anybody here seen this cartoon called jetsons jetsons it was a it was a futuristic sci-fi society shown inside a, just like the flintstones the flintstones used to show a really old world the jetsons shows a a completely utopian world where you know spaceships uh, sorry you know flying cars are around and you have a lot of buildings like sears towers and a bunch of like you you stand in one place you want to go there a tube will appear it will take you teleport you elsewhere etc right how many of you all think we we will someday reach such a society we will have flying cars how many of you think we will actually get that someday right how close are we to that anybody how close are we to that i think we are in my opinion i think we are far away from a world like that right in all honesty the, the and i hope i am wrong and i hope it's 2 years and 5 years right uh, but the way i am looking at the world we are far away from a utopian world where technology or digitization or automation has taken over every aspect of our lives and to reach to that place you need chat gpt and copilot to take up the easy task of writing code you need to be able to think the solution let somebody else write your code don't be afraid of these things you have to embrace them uh, understanding what it provides right also remember that when bootstrap came a lot of people were thinking oh now html css designers this kid who used to do phd to html right this kid would be like now everybody will create their own websites right but that's not the case uh, long back when this this small framework like bootstrap came out everybody you know started building websites that were built using bootstrap and all the websites we visited do you use bootstrap and you know when you were you were talking about uh, the previous cases i was like bhai exactly this is what keeps happening right and so you will see there is a pattern then you need something else then you need something else do you need to upskill yourself yes are we probably going to eradicate mediocrity i mean that's a very ambitious target in my opinion uh, but are we getting going to get better at you know making our people accountable for you know what they end up doing during those hours definitely yes and and an increase in developer product productivity is going to be good for all of us maybe we accelerate the journey towards that utopian world right so uh, i'll move on to the next uh, slide i wanted to kind of touch upon a couple of things uh, this learn look before you leap is something that i want to talk about to the students uh, a lot of times we end up just picking things up and trying to you know hack around with it without actually understanding things uh, 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 from the inside right and all i ask you to do is look up read the official documentation especially for technology try and read the official documentation the first page of it try and understand why this was built what is the problem it solves and then you will probably not ask questions like deepu and i were talking today and you know uh, we 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 remember there are questions like some people end up coming and asking hey you know what's the difference between jquery and react i mean should you be even comparing those jquery was probably something else right yes both are evolved out of like like both are uh, 
trying to ease the lives of JavaScript developers. But jQuery uh, was a cross-browser solution built for some things. React is a, you know, it will help you avoid boilerplate. There is repetitive tasks that you take care of, etc. Right? I want developers and students to make sure they spend some time trying to understand what they are using to build things. And when you do that, you end up being better. You need to ask why five times at least whenever you get started with a new technology. I'm not saying every day, everything, you keep asking five whys. But whenever you come across React, why do we use it? Oh, it makes our lives easier. Why do we need to make our lives easier? What is making it difficult? Oh, you know what? You end up writing the same piece of code every time. Which code specifically are we talking about? Oh, you know what? Uh, we end up. Uh, comparing versions of the previous screen to the current screen and we identify, etc. Why do we need to... If you go deep five times, you will come at the core of a problem that says, hey, you know what? This will help you achieve performance. A lot of you all understand React will help you achieve performance. How does it do that? Why does it do it? Is something I want students to start understanding and at least the, the folks who are here today, I know you all are connected to some really great mentors. Right? Uh, make sure if you are unable to figure these things out, ask. Make sure you ask around to all these smart people around you. Otherwise, you end up being the same cog in the wheel and the same mindset that you were talking about. I mean, can you become a servant easily? Yes. You know, just, just another uh, person sitting and getting some stuff done. Yes, you can do that. But uh, if you start being curious, right, innately curious, you will end up, you know, being probably the best version of yourself, right? Uh, ask, don't preach. Again, you know, make sure that you're trying to understand. Uh, on, on platforms like Twitter, etc., on Quora, etc., there are two types of people. One is some people who will be like, all right, somebody has posted this. This makes sense to me. I want to understand this better. And the same person will see something negative or this doesn't make sense. Either. All right, it's okay. Like, I'll ignore it. There is another class of people, right, on the internet. Uh, I tend to avoid them. And, and you know, they're, they're, they're uh, called trolls. So, I'll tell you this. It's, it's very, very uh, yeah, attractive to kind of, you know, try and become a troll. Oh, you know what? I, I put that person down. You know, this person is wrong on the internet. I want to prove this person wrong. Stop focusing on those things. Make sure you're learning things for yourself. Make sure you're growing and keep that positive attitude because there is negativity life is going to throw at you. Make sure you're focusing on that positive uh, uh, notion, especially when you go to platforms like Twitter. And when I'm recommending you to go to Twitter, Stack Overflow, Quora, Discord, communities like, uh, make sure you... Uh, only focus on the positives, right? And not in the sense that ChatGPT does it. Uh, but understand that areas where you know you see commotion, etc. It's okay to stand on a bike and see two people fighting. No point, right? Go, go along your journey and make sure you're focusing on growing yourself, right? Uh, surround yourself with smartest people. I think most of you all who are here are either already in Fireport 80, uh, the server itself, MuLearn, uh, a bunch of these interesting places, right? Just, just make sure you utilize them, talk to them more often, uh, and yeah. Uh, how to be a better engineer before you join the in, uh, industry? I think I, I've touched upon this uh, already. Uh, make sure you ask questions, make sure you try to understand why you're doing something, and make sure you build projects using things you've learned. Do not only do theory stuff, right? Uh, whenever you've seen a YouTube tutorial, Right? A lot of students open up YouTube tutorials and try to implement the same thing on the side. Right? It's a good way to get started with probably a new technology that you're not compatible with. After having done that, do not try to put that on your resume and you know, run for an interview. Try to build something yourself uh, uh, using, using the same learnings. And, and you're going to become a better engineer. Right? Uh, and how many of you all have a list of bookmarks or books you've bought and have never read? How many of you all are people who do this? Right? I mean, take out some time. If, if at least one or two of you uh, sets a Friday 30-minute or a Saturday 30-minute calendar invite for themselves,
to say, hey, you know what, let me go through at least one bookmark that I have made in the past, you know, I have a lot of them as well, or maybe pick up one of those books. I think we are, we are going to improve our lives significantly because uh, in this era, it is easy to hoard data. And just because you think you have seen a thread, some people write uh, how, to, uh, how to become a better engineer, a thread. People don't look below this. They will bookmark it. Done. And they're like, okay, I know how to become a better engineer. I'll implement it someday. But I know that I have access to this resource. Right? So, uh, yeah, uh, with that, I think uh, I will wrap it up. Uh, but I, I'll be around eventually during uh, networking and would love to talk to uh, a bunch of you all. Thank you.